Hey, my name is Lizzie Smiley, and I absolutely love helping people connect with their calling and all the tools they need to kick roadblocks and excuses right out the door so they can cultivate the life they dream about. If you want to launch, grow, pivot, or scale your Etsy shop, or you've always wanted to develop the mindset and skills to run your own business, then I'm your girl. I've had that entrepreneurial spirit going strong since my very first lemonade stand. And now I'm a work at home mama with multiple online companies and a full-time Etsy shop, all while being present with my kids for the everyday chaos and most important milestones. On this podcast, we'll talk about all things business, mindset, Etsy, creativity, dazzling our customers, and so much more. There's plenty of room at this table for you. So scooch on in and let's go. I'm holding nothing back. Welcome to How to Sell Your Stuff on Etsy. I'm so glad you're here. Hey guys, welcome back to the show this week. I have Haley Conley of Wholehearted Woods on the show with me. She is another success story. However, it is a different spin this time because she is on Etsy, but it is only a small part of her business. She actually started by launching her own Shopify website to sell her hand lettered wood signs. She is a brilliant hand lettering artist. Um, what's so fun about Haley is so she, she is very young. She's only 25 and she started this business back in 2018. She was in, um, in school getting an elementary education degree and she graduated with that degree and started teaching fourth grade. And on the side, she and her husband became debt free, like minus their mortgage with their side business, selling these hand lettered signs. They started in the craft fair space and then moved to social media when the pandemic hit. And they were um, doing lots of really cool things with live sales on social media. So that's one of the reasons I really wanted her to share today because it's such a different take and it's a really cool way to get momentum in your business. And they sell from their Shopify site and she is now a full-time sign artist. And they do some really cool things with live events at their home. And they've just built this amazing hand lettered sign empire. It's so cool to watch. I think you'll also really enjoy hearing about how she's built her social media, how she's built her now TikTok. And it's just a really great different kind of story for us. So um, I know you're going to enjoy it. She is now also selling a hand lettering course. So if you have been jonesing to figure out how these people have these amazing skills with handwriting, I am not one of them. She is. And so she's going to tell us about that as well. So pull up a seat, get cozy. Thanks for joining me today and help me welcome Haley to the podcast. Haley. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. I'm so glad we were able to make this happen. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're for sure. Okay, so we had Julie Oxendine from our same mastermind came on like maybe a month or two ago, and that was so fun. And I was like, I need to get my mastermind women on this because this is way too much fun. <laughs> yes, that is so awesome. So thank you, and I'm really excited because you have like a, kind of a really different. I think you're really going to inspire our listeners today because you have such a different story. You have such a different approach. You use some different tools, and I'm really excited about that. Like we love that over here. On the, like we just like I'm excited. So I would love for us today. Like let's start with your story. Um, how how did you become so good at hand lettering, and like what made you decide? I'm going to open my own shop for signs. That's amazing. Yeah. So back in 2018, my husband and I, we were getting married in June and I was like, I can DIY these signs. Like I, I'm a creative person. I could look up things on Pinterest and I can make these signs. So I went to my grandpa's workshop and made some things for our wedding. And then I had, I was going to school for elementary education. So I was going to be a teacher. So I knew I had summers off. And after the wedding, people were saying, you should continue to create and sell those things. That was all really beautiful. And I'm like, well, I would have free time in the summer. And that would make sense to make a little extra income in the summer, something to keep me busy. And so from there, I just started creating things. And at the time, after my husband and I got married, we were literally living in a camper for two months. And I was just like taking scrap wood from my grandpa's barn, from my husband's um, parents' pole barn, and just lettering on it and looking up things on Pinterest and going from there. So, and one day when I was running, I saw a little farmer's market and crafter's market and I set up my things there. And I think I sold maybe 160 or $180 worth of things. And I was like, 
oh my goodness, this is legit. I can make some money off this. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. So all while I was student teaching, I kept making signs and taking custom orders from family and friends, started a Facebook page and Instagram just to kind of build up my following from there. And so that's how I started was just from our wedding and then went from there of like, okay, I'm going to continue to make things and sell them. And so I started doing a lot of craft shows, like, like going and selling my stuff in person. Wow. And that's a lot of work. Yeah. yeah it, it is a lot of work, especially when you're hauling around big wood signs. That is yes. a lot of work. And so one of the things that um, I've tried to remember, so if 2018 was four years ago. And when I first started off, I mean, we were literally like grabbing little scrap pieces of wood and anything we could. We were driving an hour and a half to my in-laws house just to oh. cut wood and do our orders Oh my we were gosh. living in a little, like at that point we lived in a camper for a couple months and then we were in an apartment and we lived far away from our family because we were going, I was student teaching and my husband was in school. And so we drove a long ways to make it happen and then um, moved a little closer, about 30 minutes away and kept driving to their workshop because we were still in an apartment. We didn't have any tools of our own. Wow. This <laughs> is going to watch us haul this wood up the stairs and they'd kind of give us weird looks like, what are you doing? And so, and then finally in 2020, the beginning, like the springtime, we bought our own house. And now we have our own full barn and workshop and everything. So lots more space. We've definitely grown. But I was thinking about this, like, that I'm so grateful for where we started and how it sounds so silly, like in a camper, like scrap wood in an apartment and all those things. But I so encourage people, like, first of all, don't despise your small beginning. And also you yes. can, you can start anywhere with anything. And even in, um, I was reading this in Zechariah, it talks about um, like not despising small beginnings. And um, I'll read a little bit of it just so I don't misquote what the Bible is saying. But in Zechariah 4, 8 through 10, it says, then another message came to me from the Lord. Zerubbabel is the one who laid the foundation of this temple and he will complete it. Then you will know that the Lord of heaven, heaven's armies has sent me. Do not despise these small beginnings, for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin, to see the plumb line in Zerubbabel's hand. And so God was talking to Zechariah, like encourage, encouragement about Zerubbabel. And I just think God is like, he rejoices in our obedience in the small things. And I think he blesses that. And so I started off really, really small and it's grown from there. And I'm really grateful for where, where we started. And now we have our own workshop and now we, now we sell online. So that's kind of, that's, which is great. Now we don't have to pack up and go to shows anymore, which is wonderful. And honestly, with COVID that, that kind of forced us to do that in 2020, when no more shows were happening. We decided we have to start a website. We have to start an Etsy. Well, we had our Etsy before that even, but we really had to get serious about selling online because people weren't going in person anymore to things. The hand lettering piece, like, was that self-taught when you were just like skimming Pinterest for what you were going to make? Or did you already have that skill on board? Yeah. So I grew up, I loved to create, but okay. I really did teach myself. So it was, it wasn't like I didn't already have kind of a creative bone in my body, but my handwriting is terrible. Everyone always says, oh my gosh, my handwriting is so bad. I could never do it. I laugh and I'm like, you guys, my handwriting is so bad too. And so the hand lettering part honestly just came with looking at pictures and watching some videos and just kind of teaching myself with it, honestly. And so now I feel like I'm at a point where I want to be able to teach other people that. So I've done some in-person workshops at our house too. And I just um, released our lettering course because I I want to make break it down so simple. I think hand lettering is something that anyone can do. And I've broken it down so simple to help people with any sort of skill, any sort of level of creativity. And also if your handwriting's bad, you can do it too, because it's, it's possible. So it, this is particularly fun for me having also had a sign shop, but I use this industrial stencil cutter so I could get any design, any font, anybody wanted. Do you literally have like basically your, I mean, is your, I never, I never knew how this worked for hand lettering people. Like, do you basically have your own font? It's like your hand lettering font. <laughs> The, the cool part is, though, is that I have freedom with it. Like if I want to add an extra curl on the end of a letter or if I want to leave things disconnected or if I want to make something, a couple of the letters, like I like to add bounce to my letters, I can kind of play around with that. So I, I never think that my lettering looks 
Like I could letter the same word over and over again, and there'll be little differences in, in the same word. Um, That's the most but, tricky part of it. Yeah. But also over time, the more that you practice with it, it kind of does become like, oh, I can recognize that as Haley's hand lettering. So yeah, you could kind of say I have a font, although I can't really like, I can't sell the font. I could just teach you how to make your own. Right. I think, no, I just think that's so cool though, because, um, I actually have decent handwriting, but anytime I've tried lettering, it's been an absolute massive fail. Hence the, let's stick to being the person who can give you any font you want with a really great stencil cutter. Um, so I, I just like, so admire that I've never been able to like pick up on that. Like you have, and especially for me, I can't visually with my own, with my own hand lettering, I can't visually decide what's going to look good. And I know I would just need to practice and I'm just like not willing to put in the time, but I just, I really admire the skill. Like anytime I see someone who can really hand letter, I'm like, man, that is so cool. So, um, the other thing, I, okay. Oh gosh, there's so many questions. Like you said in your story, I wanted to know, so you're going over there in your grandpa's workshop, right? It was your grandpa? Well, your parents? So kind of, we did to my grandpa's a little bit and also my in-laws. So okay. between both were of them, you yeah. like there with the power tools? Like, cause my husband built everything. I didn't touch a freaking thing. Did you build these things or did your husband help you too? Or what's the story there? Yeah, we both worked together on it. Um, oh. doesn't, that doesn't scare me to like get in there and then, and, and chop things up and work with tools. So yeah, I've done a lot of the cutting and woodworking over the years. And I've even learned how to do the scroll saw and all of that, which is like that tiny little blade that you get your fingers really close. So yes, I, I dug in and, and got dirty and did the, the work with my husband too, but he helped with a ton of it as well. And now I've reached the point where he does most of that. And I'm inside doing a lot of painting, a lot of lettering, um, digital things, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So how, how did this go from... I go to craft markets and like sell probably like starting with a couple hundred dollars at a time to like, when did this go full time for you? So I, when we first started in 2018, you could hardly call it a business because we were just making things for family and friends and not really making a lot of money. Cause when you drive an hour and a half one way to your workshop, you're spending money on gas. It just doesn't really, matter. my poor mother-in-law, I had signs all over her living room floor. So that whole year I was student teaching and we were driving super far. And then that next year I got my first teaching job. I taught fourth grade and we moved closer. So we were 30 minutes away, much more feasible. And we actually started going to more shows and, um, and then just having more of a presence on social media. So we started getting more requests from people living in different states. So then we started shipping things and stuff like that. And so, um, that helped getting closer, moving closer. And then we moved. So then in, that was my, my first year, I actually went to Christy Wright's business boutique and kind of just got fired up. Like, okay, I don't want this to just be like a summer hobby for me. I want this to be like a, I want this to be a full-time job. I want to eventually stay at home with my babies and be able to make a little extra money. And so that kind of fired me up. And then the next, I'm trying to remember my timeline. Good. So let's see. My first year of teaching was two. I put us all in a time warp. None of us know what it is anymore. I know. I seriously it's like, the lost years. So my my first year of teaching, 2019 to 2020. So I ended it where we were looking for a house, and we moved into our house that summer. So my first full year of teaching, we were still in our apartment running our business, and then that summer we moved into our house. And so 2020 that, summer of 2020 yeah, summer 2020. Oh yeah. Okay. And that is when, so spring 2020 is when we, we finally launched our website. And at that time we had already had our Etsy up. It just, and that was kind of like just running in the background a little bit for us. Cause we were more getting messages on Facebook and Instagram for custom things. And so we had our Etsy running and then we opened up our own website because we knew we didn't just want to have we wanted to have multiple things on an Etsy yes. our website, like to be able to make money in, on different platforms. And so then once COVID hit and we couldn't go to any shows, like we had things scheduled out for that year and we're like, okay, we- Did you freak out or were you like, it's going to be okay? What was your, like, what were you thinking right then? Honestly, it was such a blessing for us because I was actually able to stay, I was home from school. Like I couldn't go to school. And so yeah. I had more time to work on my business because I wasn't at school. 
And so I, we started getting more orders because first of yeah. all, because people got some of those stimulus checks and also we got the big, that was our biggest season ever was yeah. that first three months of co- yeah I'm right there with you but I'm so impressed that you like only threw up your website right then but it's the social media man it's yeah. the social media that did the magic for you keep going I'm just you know I can so relate and geek out on this mm-hmm. and so in when once the shows were canceled and everything um I was home more didn't have school. I mean, I had meetings like on Zoom, but they were only for an hour or two of the day. And so I was like, well, what else am I going to do? We'll work on our business. So people kept messaging us. They were at home. Were you teaching? Us. Were you actually? At that point. I'm when... so sorry. Were you... I want to know. Yeah, you were like on Zoom teaching kids. So when we first shut down, it was that first initial three weeks. It, no one really knew what we were doing. So we didn't do anything for those first three. It was like, this is just an extended spring break. Like, don't, you don't need to do anything. Well, then it reached a point of, okay, we're actually not going back to school at all, which was actually really heartbreaking for me as far as like, I didn't get to end the year with my first class of students. It was, oh my gosh. The next year going into school, I could, I saw them in the hallway. There were fifth graders. Now I'm like, you're still mine. Like I didn't get to end it. I didn't have closure. And so once we found out we weren't going back, then we started doing some Zoom calls. I would do Monday, Wednesday, Fridays with my kids read a book. I mean, it wasn't anything crazy because not every kid could come. And so you couldn't, you couldn't require it. You couldn't do it because not every kid had access and all these things. So, wow. Yeah. So it really, it just freed up some more time for me to work on our business, more orders that way. Then we moved into our house in July, in June and we did a lot of house projects. So we kind of, we said, we can't take any more orders right now. So for like a month we took off and then that fall we said, okay, we have a big three car garage. Like what if we just, no shows were happening. What if we just put a bunch of our signs up in our garage and put it on Facebook and people come? And so we did that. We had a big event at our house in August. And then we, did, yeah. And then we started doing some live sales on Facebook. Yes, this is the good stuff. I can't wait for this. Yeah. <laughs> so we started, like I would make a certain amount of products and there was usually only one of each thing. And then I would sh- the go live on Facebook and share each product. And the first person to come that they wanted it would get it. And then we would either put it out in our pole barn for pickup or ship it to them. And then we did another huge show in November for Christmas. We like decked out our whole garage, put signs up everywhere, ornaments everywhere, and people came and shopped in person. And then we just continued on with doing the live sales on Facebook. And we've been pretty much doing that consistently ever since then. And that has been so helpful. And now we haven't gone back to going to do any more in-person shows between our fall one, our Christmas one at our house, and then our live sales. That has been, and then we will restock our website. So we'll do a live sale and I'll see what sells really well on the live sale. And if I'm like, okay, 10 people wanted that one sign, that's something I should add to our website. Or, okay, no one really wanted that. This one didn't get claimed. So that's telling me that maybe it's not a favorite. And so I won't make more of those things. So I love the live sales for a lot of reasons. But number one is it can show me what my audience likes. Like what do people, what do people want and really, really like? And then I can make more of those after the fact. Because sometimes it's hard as a maker when you think something is so cute and you make so much of it or you just, you just keep going and then you put it up for sale and no one buys it. Yep. Well, when you do a Facebook live sale, you kind of get to gauge your people and, and see if it's even worth making more of or if they like it. So and that's that's one of the reasons I really like the live sales is because instead of wasting time making a bunch of it, just make one or two and then see if people like it from there and then you can make more. So Okay, I want to like camp on this for the majority, majority of our call because we have not yet had a single person tell us this is how they make their business work and I love it. I love it. I think it's active. I know I did one live sale ever. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't do it again because everything sold so fast. And it's that, it's that, well, first of all, it's just that kind of that, that positive scarcity. I'm usually anti-scarcity, but it's this thing of like, there is one of these. And if I don't take it, that's it. And so it just, it helps people make a decision. They're either going to, they're either a hard yes or a hard no. So, so cool. Okay. So, but I want to back up because some people are, are probably like, what on earth are y'all talking about? So this was what, this was like literally one of the main reasons I wanted to have you talk, talk to us today. So, um, okay, let's, let's back up. Can you explain to people who don't know what is a live sale? What does that actually mean? Yeah. So 
I don't feel like a super expert in it. I'm like, all I do is just hit live on the show and then I show my products. But really, it's you go live on Facebook and you are you're you are there's a video of you and your products are behind you or whatever and you just I just show each product one by one and I kind are of number are you like this is number whatever or yeah so I was talking to Hunter my husband before this <laughs> and laughing and saying Hunter I am a I'm just a wing in it sort of girl like I started this business like eh, yeah I'll just try it out like I don't really know what I'm doing and same thing with the lifestyles I was like I could try that. I'll just try it out. So we literally took a pack of sticky notes and wrote number one and wrote $10 or $25, whatever the item was priced at. And I would hold the sticky note up and then I would hold the item up with the sticky note and say, this is item number one. It is $10. And if I had multiple of it, I would say, you know, I have quantity two, but if it just had one, I say only have one of these. And then I would kind of say, this would look so cute in your bathroom, or you could give this as a gift to someone you love. Like, okay. What Smart. I love about the live sale is that you are able to show the product and then sell it. Like you can, you can really convince people they need this thing that you're holding versus if they just look at a picture on your website, they're like, oh, it's so cute, but I don't need it. Versus on a live sale, I'm like, they're like, that's so cute. And then I tell them why they need it. And they're convinced. They're like, oh my gosh, yes. And also, I agree with you, that whole scarcity thing. Well, sometimes, I know sometimes it's like, uh, is, are there really not that many? But people lo- people don't want to miss out on things. Yeah. Like if you, not in like a deceptive way, but in a way that's like, I really only have, because for me, it came to the point of, I was teaching and running our business. And yeah. I was like, Hunter, I cannot keep doing this. So we decided, okay, let's make a limited amount of things. And sell those things. Like, like, so that for us, it was actually a healthy boundary thing for us. And then it turned to into, oh, wait, this works really good. People love it when there's a limited amount because then they want to jump on it. Really fast. And so it helped me not put so much pressure on myself to have to make so many things. And then it, it gave our customers kind of that feeling of, oh, I don't want to miss out on this. So... And it was like an entertainment thing. Like I was their TV for that night. Like they got to just watch and and interact with me. Like the way people want to buy from you when they know you, like Mm -hmm. once they get to know you and they um, hear your story and they, they know more about you and your family, they're like, Oh, I really want to support them. And so on the live sales, I'm able to interact with people and get to know them and have fun with them. And they get to know Hunter and I, cause we kind of pick on each other a little bit on it. And so it just allows your audience to get to know you a little bit better. And they're like, oh, yeah, I want to support her instead of, you know, a big box store or something like that. They're willing to spend extra money on my sign sure. versus going to a box store because they can actually see the person, the actual artist behind the sign. And they're like, I want to support her. I want to support um, their family. So I, I love that part of life. So too, of getting to really, them getting to see me and get to know me and interact live. Like they'll make a comment and I'll comment right back to them or I'll ask them a question and they'll comment things on it. So I just, it's so interactive, which is so much fun. Okay. If you guys have been listening to me for more than 20 minutes, you've probably heard me talk about the three most important components of a successful Etsy shop. So number one, a product that people are actually searching for and buying right now. Number two, beautiful product photos that stand out in the search results. And number three, your SEO or keywords, which really simply just means your Etsy listings need to include the exact same phrases that your shoppers are searching for up there in that Etsy search bar. In fact, even if shoppers are buying your product like gangbusters from other shops and your pictures are like the quality to be on the cover of a magazine, if you don't have your SEO nailed and those perfect word phrases all throughout your Etsy listings, shoppers will literally never find you. So wait, 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 don't feel discouraged. I've got you. I want to let you in on my secret weapon for SEO on Etsy. It's a website called Sale Samurai that mines all of Etsy's shop and listing data so that you don't have to. Thank you. (laughs) You can find out what keyword phrases are searched the most for every single niche and how many listings are using them so that you can understand how steep the competition is. That is so 
helpful. So within the program, you're able to see details like hundreds of other keywords you can use, what shops and listings are performing the best in your space, what the pricing competition looks like, and so much more. It's literally, uh, literally a goldmine of information that will help you compete in the search results. So if you would like to get a sneak peek of exactly what Sales Samurai can do, why I love it so much, what makes it so powerful. I created a YouTube video that will give you that overview. So check that out. It will be linked in the podcast show notes for you. And so Sales Samurai is a very reasonable monthly membership that you're going to want to maintain because you're going to do this research constantly in your Etsy shop. And they have very generously given me a 20% off for life coupon code just for you guys. So you get to start with a free trial, but go through my link so that they'll give you that lower rate for as long as you stick with the service. We all need to save a few bucks here and there. So the code is how to sell your stuff. There's no spaces between the words and it's all lowercase. But of course, I will just link their site, the discount code and that YouTube mini tutorial for you all down in the show notes. (laughs) I'm so excited for you guys to get your hands on this one. I'm obsessed with it. I literally use it every day. I use it with my clients. We help help them get the edge. And I just know how much it can help you with that SEO game. So I definitely encourage you to give it a try. So, and you're, okay. So um, there's some nuance to this, right? Like you're using, you can't use your Facebook profile, right? Because that's against the terms and conditions of Facebook to be selling. So you created a Facebook page for your business, which I know you mentioned earlier, and you're running all your sales from there, right? Yes. So we have a Facebook page and an Instagram page, and we just recently got on TikTok. And I just recently got on YouTube as well with my lettering. And so, but Facebook and Instagram are what I did for the longest time. So if someone's listening to this and they're just starting off with their business, I highly recommend just starting off with maybe just one platform, Facebook or Instagram. Honestly, TikTok is becoming really, really popular. Um, But with Facebook, you do have to have a personal Facebook page in order to create a Facebook page. So that you have to have a Facebook page in order to do that, but you wouldn't go live on your personal one. You would go live on your business page. How did you get all the people there? Like, how did you create the audience for these lives? (laughs) Trying to think of how, how did we do that? Honestly, it was just consistency. I mean, from 2018, I just posted pictures. They not daily in the beginning necessarily, but I mean, that's, I would recommend that now, but I just kept showing up. Like I kept posting a picture and typing a caption with it. And then I, at first when we started our business, you know how on Instagram where they go on their stories and they'll show their face and they'll kind of talk about, you know, what they're doing that day or whatever. I remember saying, I am never going to do that. That's so embarrassing. My voice, I don't like my voice on camera. I won't do that. Oh, oh my gosh. I know. I love your voice. (laughs) And so once I, but once I got over that initial fear, I was like, all right, I have to do it because everyone else I'm noticing that's growing and has like a big platform and is doing really well with their business. They're doing it. They're on their Instagram stories. stories. Yeah. And so I started doing that. I started going on my stories, which also allowed people to get to know me. So Facebook lives happen, you know, at 8 PM for 30 minutes or an hour. So not everyone's on the live sale. But Instagram stories are available for, which also post to my Facebook stories. They're available for 24 hours. And so people are able to just watch those. And those are shorter than a live video, obviously. And so people were able to watch those and get to know me a little bit better as well. And so I think between just posting, getting on my stories and letting people get to know me. And then we had family and friends share our things on their social media, tell other people about it. And then I will say the in-person shows we did in the beginning of our business, that helped too, because people would come and find us on our social media. So we just kept consistent with posting um, and showing up on the Did you run ads for your audience? Did you run ads at all to grow your audience? No, not really. We've never- I love that. Yeah. I want people to hear that. Like you can do it without running the ads. I always listen to different people who have gotten to where they are and think, oh my gosh, they're so much more official than I am. I- I'm telling you, I seriously have just been winging it this whole time. I don't know how to run. I don't really know how to run ads. I mean, we've like, we've found one sign where like, oh, people really like this. So we throw an ad on it, but it never does anything crazy. I mean, it will get some sales from it, but it's never like, oh my gosh. And so we've just like, we've just kept to it, kept our nose to the, the ground and just kept going. Like we didn't, we didn't do anything fancy. We didn't have to run, spend a bunch of money on ads. 
And I will say another thing too is sometimes we just go live, like I'll go live and just let her assign, like I'm working on something or I'll go live and just kind of chat about things. And that, that helps grow our business as well. There was one time where, um, we had a lot of people on and it helped grow our page a little bit more. So I don't know, just the consistency of posting on social media, because that is free marketing for your business. It feels like another job, honestly. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's why I think people get tired out from that. Um, but if you can, if you can maybe figure out a plan and maybe schedule some things out or, um, yeah, just be willing to kind of put in that extra work with your social media. It, I, I, it has paid off so much for our business. So I would highly encourage people to get on social media if they're not already. This is consistent with what Julie, what Julie taught on her episode, which I'll link that below for you guys. Cause you're probably like, what are you talking about? But she talked about literally how social media blew up her business and she does wreaths. So, um, I totally agree. I just love the live component and that that's still to this day. So what else, okay. What other, um, so Facebook and Instagram work best for the lives? Yeah, so we 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 tried Instagram for the lives and it just wasn't as good as Facebook. So we just okay. do the lives on Facebook. Now, I will okay. say, and I haven't tried this out yet because we just recently got on TikTok middle of January. I was so... My next question, have you tried TikTok yet for a live? <laughs> I was so hesitant. I did not want to get on it. I was like, I do not want another social media to manage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm exhausted. But... I just reuse my content. Like I don't post yeah. different things on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. I uh, maybe I'll post them on different days or maybe I'll change something up. Maybe I'll do a video on Instagram, but a picture on Facebook, but I reuse the same thing. So I'm not like trying to come up with three different things to post every single day. And so I finally decided, okay, I'll go to TikTok and TikTok has started rolling out a live sale feature for some makers. And I've gone live a couple times just lettering because people enjoy watching the lettering. I haven't done a live sale on there yet, um, but I, I could see that being a great a great way to um, grow your business, get some sales, grow your audience as well. So I'm really familiar with the Facebook Live because that's what I've always done, but I'm starting to see TikTok take off and grow more for people. Yes. And so I'm willing to, I'm probably going to start trying that next to see how that goes. So. Do you follow the lady? Her I I don't know her exact handle, but it's like Mrs. Dutchy. Yeah. If you type that in, it'll probably. Did you follow her? My husband found her, and yeah. he, <laughs> so now I follow her, and she is live every single night at eight p.m. Eastern. Crazy. Forever for like hours, and she makes tumblers, and people order from her, and then she makes it in front of you, and literally people line up and just watch her for hours make these tumblers because it's kind of fun to watch and she's a character I'll tell I'll give you that but like oh my gosh so I mean she's not selling it there she's already sold it but she's generating her next sales like there's no way she could fulfill all the orders that she could get I mean that that's where I think the like it is a for, it's a form of entertainment for people like it is yes. their tv that night like they will sit down and watch that and then it's just going so I I need to get better about going live on TikTok because I know that that's a good, that's a great spot to grow with your business right now. Yes. So low hanging kind of fruit. Cool. Yeah. Yep. For sure. What is your strategy on there right now? I know you basically said you're reusing the same content, which is a great strategy in and of itself, but is there anything beyond that you've kind of learned the specifics of TikTok that's worked for you? So I have found I don't really have like some videos are great. And other videos you're like, that was a total flop. You, yes. my biggest, again, I feels annoying to say it, but did you hear that? I just, it's thunderstorming here. Oh my gosh. I wish it was thunderstorming here. It's Texas and it's a hundred <laughs> degrees. I don't to hear that. That was super loud. So anyway, uh, your stomach growling Haley. <laughs> yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> so I'm trying some different things. Like some of my videos, I'll do it where it's just a video of me making a sign and it's just music playing. So they're just watching me letter. Sometimes I'll do a video of me lettering and I'm doing a voiceover where I'm kind of talking them through like what they could do with this sign or whatever. Some videos are me talking about lettering because I'm a teacher of lettering. And then some of them are my face. I'm just trying to mix things up of like just music, some voiceovers some of your face because people like to know who they're buying from. I mean, yes. I know when I go to someone's business page, the first thing I do is scroll and try to find a picture of them. 
<laughs> I'm like, who is this person? What's their family look like? I want to, I want to know them a little bit more before I trust them or want to buy from them. And so, um, I've done some videos of my face on there as well. And I have found that the, if you can kind of find a little like niche, if you can find, if you can get into this pocket hole of, of like a really specific niche, that is when your TikTok is going to blow up. So for me, I found that weddings, like if you can get into that bride TikTok, like if you can hit all the brides and the people that love wedding videos, any sort of like Mr. or Mrs. sign that I've done, it has blown up with people who are like going to be brides or something like that. Or teachers, like um, signs for teachers and things like that. There's a really big teacher at TikTok. Um, dog lovers. We had our very first, like we had a sign that was for dogs go, I called it mini viral. It was like, I couldn't believe it because I had just started my TikTok and all of a sudden it was like over 10,000, over 20,000, over, th I'm like, oh my word. And we were got, we got like 50 some orders of that same exact sign oh. just from that one TikTok. And so dog, dog stuff is a really big, it's a great niche, it's a great niche. And then also just like, um, people who love lettering, like creative crafty sort of people. So I don't necessarily, I feel like I'm not a great social media strategy person. I just kind of try things, like just throw it at the wall and see if it sticks. So I've just tried a bunch of different things out to see what works. And if I if I hit one of those things, like if I hit into a niche that's like people are so obsessed with their dogs, or they are they love teaching or whatever, then I can then that is like it usually takes off. So if you can try to find some, pro if you sell products, if you can try to find some products that really um, people like just absolutely love because they love their dogs or they absolutely love because they are going to be a bride or something like that, then that's really helpful. Haley, I actually think, okay, strategy is great. Like love me some strategy, but to be honest with you, I am much more like you and I can't tell you how many people I coach that are so frustrated because they have tried all the strategies on Etsy or on social media or whatever, and nothing is working yeah. and they almost kind of burn out faster because they're like, well, I, I just clearly can't do this yeah. or I was lied to and the strategy isn't real. Yeah. And I love when we can hear from someone like you, who's like, just try stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you never know what's going to take off. Like just, I mean, organize chaos. Like don't, you know, like don't try to sell a sign one day. And then the next day you're like, well, I guess I'll try a crocheted blanket. Like actually go after something, choose something and go after it, but then just try stuff. And this is, this is what I'm constantly encouraging. Cause I think it gives us the best, um, the best setup for success because a, we're having this attitude of like, oh, I'm just playing. Like I'm a, I'm a scientist in a laboratory. I'm trying different things. I'm just going to test and that's why I'm always telling them, like, especially on Etsy, like throw up a ton of listings, not because you have to have a ton, like some shops, yeah, they have three and they make hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you know what? It may have been that they had 2000 and then they figured out what those three were, you know what? You never know what happened before and you never know what could happen if you try to put up a whole bunch and you just try a whole bunch of different things. So I, I think it's super cute. You're like, I don't know guys, I just try whatever. Like, I'm like, yes, like, don't be ashamed of that at all. That is that's so powerful. Like that attitude is like it, the world is your oyster. So I'm all for it, Haley. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. I do want to talk cause you're a unicorn for us on the podcast because Etsy is a secondary marketplace for you. Like you, it's not very often that someone can come out of the, I mean, I did, and I love what you did. You did it because you did, you did, um, um, live you went sales. to events, you yeah. did live sales and you then built your own website. I think that's freaking awesome. And that's like, I think the end goal, most people can't start very well that way, but I do want to have just a minute or two here with you about Etsy um, because you do, you do use it, but it's just not a primary or even, it's not like a super important thing for you. So tell us how you use it. Yeah. So I will admit, I don't spend as much time on Etsy. I just, I, I nurture my audience on my social medias and I push people, I'm constantly pushing people to my website. I don't even, I don't even think I have Etsy in my link tree because I don't want people to go to Etsy who I have on social media. I want to push them straight to my website. So for yeah. me, Etsy is, okay, these are people I'm just, I would miss otherwise. So 
because, and I really, I do need to spend some more time on Etsy because I think that Etsy likes it when you spend time on it and actually put yeah. up new listings and edit some yeah. listings and things like that. So I think that I need to, and I want to put some more digital things up there, like lettering SVGs and stuff like that, because Etsy is going to be a, is a spot where you're just going to get random people. Like they're not coming to my Etsy from my Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. They're just randomly, they type in something. As long as my tags are good and the SEO is good on something, they're going to find me. And so I like to keep it up because I think it helps get random people that I would otherwise miss if I didn't have it still up. So we don't necessarily generate a ton of sales on it, but I haven't closed it down because I still want to play around with it and keep it open because I feel like there's people there that I just wouldn't get otherwise without having Etsy because it generates so much random traffic for people. I mean, our coach, Jennifer Elwood always says, yeah, use Etsy. And, um, cause she's taught, she's always, she, you guys may have heard her episode as well. Um, she talks about creating multiple streams of income. Like don't put all your eggs in one basket, which I totally agree with. And Haley's done a great job of this. Um, but she, like, she says, use Etsy as a lead generation tool. And that's basically what you're doing, Haley. Like, you're not, like, could you do a lot more with it? Yeah, you probably could. But how much better is it to have your own platform, your own site, and to have people, they're not coming to Etsy to shop. They're coming to you to shop. And that's that's the end game anyway. Right. I think it's great. Okay, thank you. So I think, I, I mean, I can only really imagine the different ideas that people are, that are popping off people's heads right now. So, um. Okay, I do want to ask you this too. For for people who are listening who are maybe just getting started on their journey, like they're a creative, they're back, like think of you in your early days, like you need to start somewhere. What tips would you give them just to have some quick wins? Like we don't want to get them super discouraged. Like what would you encourage them to try yeah. um, just getting started? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think whatever your passion. So for me, it was like, I am creative. I like to create signs and stuff. That was fun for me. So I started off making a couple things. And then I would post a picture of it on my social media. Sometimes I would share it to my personal one, or I would show it to family and friends and they'd send it to someone else. So start off making a couple things. And then once you start posting, even, even if you post it on your personal Facebook, just saying like, Hey, I'm starting to dabble in crocheting, or I'm starting to dabble in painting. What do you guys think of this? A lot of times people are like, wow, that's so awesome. You should start selling those things, which is kind of what happened with ours. It's kind of how it started with people said, wait, you should sell these. And then I was like, oh, okay. And so if you just start posting some pictures of what you're creating, then it's going to get people start to think, hey, I have a baby shower coming up. Can you make this for me? Or, hey, I have this spot in my house that I need something or my kid has been really wanting this, it's going to start getting to people think, well, why don't I just go to her instead of searching on the internet, some random person, you're going to yes. start off with people that know you. So it's going to be your family and your friends right away. Yes. And the things that you make for them, take pictures of it and then post it on social media so people can see what you're able to do because nobody's going to buy from you if they don't see what you have for sale. Like if they don't, if I never posted any pictures of what I make, how would people know what I make? They wouldn't, they wouldn't buy from me because they're like, I don't know what she does. I don't know what she makes. And so you just have to start making some things, put pictures up. I, I really highly would recommend starting a social media. Even if you're just like one platform, just start one platform. Pick, I don't care which one you do, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, just pick one and get on it and start posting videos and pictures of the stuff that you're making and let people see what you're making because then they're going to say, well, that's really cool that you do that. I, I like that. I'll buy this from you. And then they start telling their friends and family what you're doing. And then it goes from there. And if you shows are kind of hitting this for us, it was a great way to just kind of get comfortable and meet some new people and get our name out there. But the world is so online nowadays. You'd never have yes. to do that. Because if, if you just want to stay home, that's fine. And then you're just going to have to be consistent on your social media because that's how you're going to get your, your business and your name and your things in front of people is by going on social media and being consistent on there. So if you're you patient, just, right? It's not like, it's not like social media takes time. It does. It does. I but Haley, you're young. You're like super young. Is so is Facebook dead? I need to know from a, are you a Gen Z or are you a Gen Y? -er? I... I was born in 1996. What what does that make me? <laughs> you're probably kind of borderline. I don't actually even know. But the point is, you're a lot younger than me. And um, so do you think, so could someone start on Facebook today and have success? Yeah, see, I, I think, I think there's still 
lots to do on Facebook. I think there is still plenty of, I, I still really think you can grow your business on Facebook. I think it comes down to a personal preference sometimes for some of those things. Some people are like, oh, I do not like Facebook. And some people are like, I don't really like Instagram or I don't really like TikTok. But I think Facebook is a good place to start. Um, I think it's easier than Instagram. Yeah, I think it's just an easy entry level to get on there. Okay, I just had to get you on tape saying that. I love it. Yeah, I don't Um, think there's anything wrong with that. I think Facebook's a great place to start. I agree. Especially for like what we're doing, right? For like crafty stuff, for creative stuff, people on Facebook are still really here for that. Yeah, yeah. Like I could, I could admit there might be other businesses that that it's not where I would suggest that they go, but for the our kind of stuff. Okay. So I do want to take some time before, cause I know I've got to let you go here soon, but I do want to take some time and talk about your lettering course because I mean, even has my interest peaked, um, even though I, I've tried before and failed so many times, but you're launching, launching a lettering course, like Actually, it launched this week. So you want to help others learn the art. Do you want to talk about like, where did that, how did you decide to do that? Where like, you're just like, I've got to teach again. I need to hear your perspective on that. And what is the, like, what would it help people do? Like talk about your course a bit. Cause I think that's so cool. Yeah. So I was a teacher and I've talked to you guys on this in the beginning of the show. We talked about that. I was a fourth grade teacher. I love teaching. I really, truly believe God created me to teach. I think that he gives people different gifts. And I think that's one of mine. And yeah. so Once I was done with teaching like elementary school kids, I was like, I, I'm not done teaching. Like there is more for me to do in the teaching world. It just might not look like I thought it would. And so I started seeing more, um, the more that I'm on, you're on social media, you're going to see, oh, there's courses for this, or there's, you just start your brain. If you're creative, sometimes your brain might be overloaded with ideas. And that's how mine is. Everyone's like, you could do this. You could do that. I'm like, trust me, I have thought of it all. And so I, I kept seeing people talk about like doing a course to teach whatever they have, you know, whatever their craft is. I'm like, oh my gosh, I like taught myself how to hand letter. Why couldn't I teach people how to do that? Because I remember when I first started, I didn't, no one taught me. And I kind of looking back at some of my old things that I made, I probably should have had someone teaching me, but it was, it's okay because I learned a lot from it. But if people take my course, I want to be able to help people with a shortcut. Like I want you to get better at lettering way faster than I did and teach you things that I wish I would have known in the beginning. Cause when I was first starting off with lettering, I didn't really know what I was doing or why I was doing certain things. And now that I know that I'm like, let me help other people. I don't want them to just randomly like have no clue what they're doing. Why don't I give them all my shortcuts? Why don't I give them all my tips and tell them everything I know about it? And I think that hand lettering is a skill that you can use in so many areas of your life. Yes. Tell us about that. Like how are people using that today? I'm so curious to hear this. So I have taught some in-person lettering workshops and then I have had so many people on social media say, I live way too far away. I I can't come to your in-person lettering workshop. And so then I thought, okay, I've got to figure out a way to make this happen online. And teaching through COVID, I had to video myself. I had to take videos of myself teaching lessons. So, hey, God was preparing me before this all even happened. He was like, all right, you're going to teach lessons during COVID, videoing yourself because I'm preparing you for this next season of your life where you're going to teach lettering. So um, ladies were asking for this online lettering course. And so I've taught some in-person lettering classes. I still do that because I love in in-person is my jam, but I also know it's just not possible for everyone. And I want to make it available for everyone. And so I've had ladies that sent me pictures of their Christmas gifts, like we wrap it up and then they write their name on it all cute or um, like addressing a card to someone, like oh, putting yeah. your name on it or yeah. even just, yeah, yeah. Even just making cards, like happy birthday or um, Mr. and Mrs. ones for weddings or um, congratulations for a baby shower that you're going to, or if you have a graduation party coming up, which that's happening like right now, this is the graduation season. And how many times do you have to go to an event and you're like, oh, I don't have a card. (laughs) Or you have to run to the store really quick, or you just have to throw something together. And every single one of my family members or friends, they know that when they get a card from me, it's going to be homemade. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I buy a bulk pack on Amazon and I have an Amazon Um, storefront, like an affiliate link where I send people to and I say, Hey, I get a bulk pack of, of cards here. 
15 bucks or whatever for like 50 of them. And then every time I have an event, I pull out the card and then I letter on the card and people are like, Oh, this is so beautiful. I love it. So you can, yeah. your own it's card. really special to get one like that. I always, I, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I always melt. Yeah. And then also Bible journaling has become really popular and even just journaling every single day or taking um, sermon notes when you're at church. I know I'm like, I'm sitting there, you know, I'll make certain words. Oh my pretty. gosh. I use it sometimes just for a relaxation thing. Like sometimes we just need something in our life where we are just, we're able to be creative, but it's not anything where we have to produce or be productive. It's just a relaxation thing. And I think lettering is a good creative outlet for people that's easily accessible because sometimes painting feels hard and yeah. draw to me drawing feels very hard I don't know how to draw very well but lettering feels like okay you're just writing letters and we all know how to write letters and they're just making it a little extra fancy and adding some thickness to it and voila you have lettering so I feel like it's I, I know that's super simple right you think it's not so easy yeah. but and really I'm, I try to break it down and make it so simple in my lettering course because I really think that it's something that anyone can do. And I think that it's so important for people to be creative. Like, even if it's not in your bones, like you feel like I'm just not a creative person. I think it's so good for us all to have some sort of creative outlet and do something. So to me, lettering is also a good, just sit down, practice, even if it doesn't look that good in the beginning, just to kind of letter some things out. So I like it for relaxation. Also, you could you can start your own business with it. Like you can take this course and the money that you spend on the course, you could make back by selling like two signs. You know, like you could start your own business with lettering if you want to. And there is enough people in this world for you to start a business and for this person to start a business. Yeah, definitely. Like, like there is plenty of room for everyone else to do that. And, and some people might find that that's not for them. Um, but you could start a business with your lettering. Or if you have a cricket, like um, if you just kind of craft with things, um, that's a, the lettering, you could you could do lettering on your crafts and you can send files to your cricket and it could be your own lettering on your t-shirt. Or that's a, cool. Yeah, so I just think that, and I could go on and on, the possibilities are endless with what you could do with lettering. And I'm like, okay, everyone can do it. Everyone can do it. I just think this timing is perfect because we're moving into summer and things are hopefully for at least I know for me, we're going to slow down a little bit and it's going to be time to pick up some of those more like for me things. It's going to be, there's going to be some space to learn something new or try something new or sharpen our skills. Like just to like, um, I just think of it as a time to like to rest and to grow. You know, so I, I actually think, I think this is so cool that you're, nobody launches a course right now. I'm so excited you are. I think this is so cool. What is like the, what is the format, Haley? What can people expect? It's like a video coaching, like you're showing them, taking us through exercises. Yeah. So you'll just, you, there's six different modules and each module, like I break down the lowercase alphabet, the uppercase alphabet, how to connect letters, write out wow. words. And then we practice we just practice writing out some words together. And then also I walk you through the process of how I go from having a, how do I generate ideas? How do I sketch things out and design it? And then how do I have a finished product? And so I'll walk them through my whole process of that. And then I talk about, okay, what can you do with lettering? How do you get better? I give them some traceable things. It just, from start to finish, they'll go from, I have no clue what I'm doing to, okay, I can actually make things with this new skill that I have. So um, all the videos, I tried my best to make all the videos 10 minutes or under. There might be a couple that are over, but I want it to be where people are able to sit down, watch one video, do a few letters, and then be able to go and go on with the rest of their day. Like they don't have to spend a ton of time on on the course. They can every day they could spend 10 minutes or every week they could spend 10 minutes. You know, it's something where each they could watch one video and feel like they got something accomplished. They learned something and then they can move on. And I also love the course because they have access to it, like lifetime access to it. So once okay. if, they, if they watch a video and they want to rewatch it, they can rewatch it. If they have to pause it in the middle because something comes up with their family, they can leave and come back and watch it. And then once they watch the whole course, if they go to create a project and they're like, I can't remember how to do that or what'd she say about that, they can go back and watch it. And let's say they buy this course right now 
Because the doors do close. So we, it is open. Yeah, what's your window? Yeah. yeah it's open, open right now. Tuesday. Just open on Tuesday and then it'll open or it'll close next Wednesday at midnight. So that'll be May 25th. And my encouragement is even if these next couple of weeks for you are busy, you're like, I can't even think about starting this course. Buy the course and then it just sits there and it waits for you. Like you do not have to start it on a certain date. You don't have to finish it on a certain date. It is open to you at any time. But you just want to make sure you have it so that all summer long you can just be picking away at watching different videos and then take your notebook to the beach. Or while your kids are playing outside, you have your journal out there. Or they're lettering with chalk and you're lettering with chalk. Or they're, you know, they're coloring with chalk and you're lettering with chalk. So there's lots of different things you could do um, in the summertime. And the, the videos aren't super long. And you can watch them on your phone or on your computer. It doesn't really matter where you watch them. But you have access to it all the time after you purchase it. That's perfect. Okay. So I will, you guys, I will, um, I've got those links from Haley. I will link the course for you in the show notes and we'll make sure. So, um, and then, you know, if you miss it, jump on it while she's open. If you miss it, you can get on her wait list for next time because she's not like me where I keep mine just open. Um, a lot of people have to just do windows so they can keep up with, (laughs) keep up with their students. So, okay. So They can participate, right? They can enroll below. We've got a few more days to get on there. And then what are some of the other, what are the best places for people to follow up with you, Haley? If they want to like, you know, follow you, if they want to see your sign shop, what is the best way for people to keep in touch with you? I am active on my Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. All the time. I'm trying to be more active on my YouTube, just started that. So I would love to have people join me there as well. I engage a lot on my stories, which I would highly encourage other people. Like if you're just starting off on your business, I'm telling you, people want to get to know you. So if you want to get to know me, come join me and watch my stories because I share behind the scenes. Like you'll get to see me with my hair up in a crazy bun and no makeup and our bathroom remodel. And just like you get to see kind of some of the behind the scenes and get to know us a little bit better. Um, on our stories. So TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, any of those places, kind of wherever you like to hang out, I'm there. Are they all, um, it's like at Wholehearted Woods on all of them? Is that just your, okay, at Wholehearted Woods. Of course, I'll link that below as well, but you can find her there um, and see her and see her her shop and her lettering course. And Haley, this has been so fun. It's been, I love it when I get to do something so different on the podcast and your story is, and you're such a joy to be with. Thank you. It was so good to be able to chat with you. And hopefully I was able to encourage someone and make them realize you do not have to know what you're doing in order to start your business and to have some success. I love that. That is like my favorite kind of story because I think it feels really accessible. You know, we can all, um, there's, there's more than enough room at the table for all of us. And um, it's just a matter of like getting in there and being okay with making some mistakes and being okay with it not being overnight. Like this isn't the solution for you if you need to feed your family tomorrow and you right. can't. Like no, yes. this is something you build slower on the side and you you take little bits, you take little bites of it and you keep trying new things. You've you've got to keep like the energy toward it. And I think if you're in a really desperate situation, it's really hard to keep that keep the energy and the excitement. But if you can come at it like Haley does from a really playful childlike perspective, we're like, I'm just going to keep trying stuff. Like I can try that. Like, why not? What's the worst that's going to happen? I think it's easier to stay in the game and to, you know, long enough to hit it. Yeah. And I started off, I was working full time doing this at nights on the weekends. So it was not, this was not my full time thing in the beginning. And to be honest, in the beginning, I really wasn't making much money. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's not overnight success. It was a lot of hard work to get to where we are. And of course, all glory to God, because I truly believe that he has, he has grown our business and we've been obedient and just saying, okay, you, you said you're going to provide for us of me not teaching anymore, which is scary to leave a consistent, you know, every two weeks you get paid this. Um, but we trusted him with it and he has blessed us and our business has grown. So I think it's an awesome story and I can't see what happens next. And I'm so excited you're moving into this like teaching space as well. I think that's a really cool move for you. Yes. Um, so I will be watching with bated breath to see how it goes. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Yes. I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Take care, Haley. See you later. Bye. And that's a wrap on this episode of how to sell your stuff on Etsy. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you're looking for more resources, head on over to howtosellyourstuff.com where you'll find podcast show notes, all the links from today's episode, the blog, courses, coaching, and more. If this episode was helpful to you, 
awesome. The greatest compliment I can receive from you is a rate, review, and subscribe on this podcast. Not only will it allow us to connect again on a future episode, it lets me know I'm providing you with value and helps other people find this content more easily. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. Have a great day and see you next time.